excited, and but we were also really nervous because we knew that this was going to be an amazing experience. Uh, but the first place we went to when we got there was the Fukui Prefectural Office, and there we got a little insight of Fukui. We learned about famous landmarks like Tojimbo. We also learned about the food. We know we learned about a $200, $200 crab. And we just learned quite a bit of history about Fukui. Absolutely one of the most relaxing places in Fukui.
were we were on our way to the Japanese high school in Fukui and it just we were so it's, we were about to meet a lot of new people and we were also going to meet our host My favorite part of this trip would probably be going to the high school, Takefu Higashi High School, where we met a ton of different kinds of people. What we started, we started doing this little round table kind of thing where we met other people and we got to talk to them where we would just sit down and talk and it was pretty cool. Like, I remember the first set of people I met were two girls and, and they would tell me their name and I would be like, wait, what? Because I didn't understand their name because they spoke Japanese really well and English not so well, but they tried their hardest. And afterwards, we started talking and we found out that there's one thing we had in common and it was this anime we both watched and that's how we bonded. Just knowing that we saw the same anime, we could talk about it and we could share our experiences about that anime. And it was great because I can talk to her just like a normal person even though this is the first time I've ever met her. I also met some other kinds of people during that trip to the high school. The second round of people, I also had two girls, and she was pretty crazy. She, she would yell, she would talk in English, she tried to tell me so much about Hukui in the shortest amount of time, and it was really interesting, and I liked it, but it was like a little too much, and I was surprised, because usually I thought the Japanese people would be kind of to themselves, quiet, but she would talk, like outgoing, crazy, and I kind of liked that, because it was something I didn't really realize that the Japanese people would do. After that, we were able to meet our host family, mostly the student at the time, and we, I finally got to meet the person I would be staying with for the next three days, and that was pretty exciting, because I was a little scared at first, because I was like, I don't know, does he know English, does he know Japanese? But at first, I just looked at him and smiled, and he smiled back, and I knew that we could be friends. The homestay, we got to stay with a Japanese family in a house and experience what it's like to live there. Um, let's see. And we got to go, and we got to have a traditional Japanese dinner with them and then sleep on uh, futons. That was fun. They were actually more comfortable in the hotel beds. going shopping with my host family because we went with some of these, uh, Hannah and Cameron's host family all together and we went to different stores. There's this one store that had a bunch of different like school supplies and stationery. It was really different than Americans because in Americans everything's so like dull and ordinary but in Japan it's just like just like different colors and designs and all the pens and pencils and the erasers were shaped like different things and it was just, like really colorful uh, like like in like America, it's just like black and white and orange. So the thing that I liked was the homestay because we got to go on uh, trips with the family and it was really fun because we went to Tojimbo 
and Tojimbo is this cliff place that you get to stand there and take pictures and there's a sunset view that you can see like at noon and it's really awesome because um, it's like every view of Tojimbu is just really like beautiful like any angle if even if you take a bad picture it's still gonna turn out great and we also saw stores there and they had so many cultural things that I wanted to buy it all but I couldn't so I really like Tojimbu. My favorite part of the Kakahashi trip has to be the homestay. I made a very great friend, my host sister Sai, who's 16. She went to uh, the local high school. Uh, we had a great time. We played a lot of video games together. We went to a terrific Udon restaurant. Uh, it was the, some of the best food I've ever had. Her mother made this awesome curry rice and sorry mom, but you just can't, you just, <laughs> you just can't do it like she does. Oh. <laughs> the cat hated me, of course, but that's to be expected. Uh, we went to this awesome arcade and I blew like 10 bucks there. Uh, we got a couple of prizes though, so it was a lot of fun. I know I'm gonna definitely be coming back to see Sai at some point. We had a great time and I'm gonna definitely miss her. My favorite part was the homestays. It was just uh, really cool getting to meet, get to know a uh, Japanese family, and their house was just amazing, and they brought us to some really cool stuff, like the Tojimbo cliffs, uh, really high cliffs over the water that had a cool story to it about how they uh, shoved off an evil Buddhist priest, and um, all of it was good, but that was probably my the highlight of it. Homestay was really great. It was like just such nice people. Everyone was so genuine. My family, I was so lucky. I was so lucky to have such a great family. It, it felt like an American like family, but just the language barrier was the only thing. Everyone was just, except way nicer than American. Because American people tend to be pretty rude sometimes. But it's, Japan is so great because it's like when you go to a different country you see how people everywhere are all the same except for their language and culture differences but in Japan it's like everyone's just so nice anybody you see anyone you talk to is just so nice and they want to help you do whatever you need to do in any way they can do it just it's just great it's way better than America like seriously <laughs> My favorite part was definitely the homestay because we got to be immersed in the Japanese culture firsthand and kind of got to see what it's like, how a Japanese person lives their life daily. And I also got to eat many good foods in the house that they prepared and it was so delicious. It was really good. <laughs> and I just really loved being with the family. They were so nice and it was really fun learning about how different it is from America and also the same. <laughs> interesting to compare and contrast the similarities and differences that we have between each other. And um, it was fun trying new foods that they had at their house and how they prepared them and um, how respectful they were. interacting with Japanese people when they don't know that English. And it really challenged me to speak more Japanese. And I think it would be really fun to come back again. I really 
really enjoyed um, spending time with my host family. We went to this really cool uh, bookstore. Um, I think it was called Books Hard Off, and um, there was tons of like manga and stuff all on the first floor. New video games, and the top floor was all these cool electronics and stuff. I ended up buying a bunch of uh, Japanese Pokemon games and stuff, uh, like a uh, Pokemon Gold version. Uh, this was actually my first video game, the English version, so it's kind of cool to get it in Japanese now. But um, as I learned, uh, when I started playing one of the games, it's actually a really good uh, teaching tool for Japanese because I'd see words that I don't recognize or different grammatical forms and stuff, and I could ask the kids in our group who are better at Japanese about it. And it's, it was actually really interesting uh, learning Japanese that way. So, yeah, that was really fun. Um, but also, on my homestay, besides going out to the bookstore, we went to um, a Japanese bathhouse. And that was a, it was a unique experience because, um, you know, you're in a big room with a bunch of naked dudes. <laughs> kind of kind of, kind of weird at first, but uh, it was really relaxing in the end. And, I love the uh, I love going to the sauna and um, then hopping into like a super cold water and it was it was kind of hard at first but it was really really refreshing in the end and I really enjoyed it. Favorite part? I would have to say it's the homestay, probably like everyone else said, just because it was so amazing getting to connect with people. Just as Dante said himself that. Uh, you come here expecting so many strict traditions and Asian culture is so harsh and everything that you have to follow these rules, you have to bow whenever you say thank you, but you go there and you see that, yep, buddy, people are people wherever you go, teenagers are teenagers wherever you go, They'll, you'll still talk about the same things, you'll still, you'll still like hang out and do exactly what you do, you play video games, uh, we, I stayed up with Junior, Junior Kun, we stayed up till past midnight just talking, he would, he would teach me and then I would teach him, I would speak in Japanese to him and then he would speak in Japanese to me and said he wants to become a teacher so it was really good like trying to help him prepare for becoming a teacher. One of the um, activities we did in Fukui was we got to make um, Japanese paper and at first we, well first we made our own Japanese paper and then we went to another place where this Japanese guy uh, he told us and all the steps it took to make Japanese paper. Right. Only that make Making washi paper which means Japanese paper and that was really cool learning the different experience the different processes that the paper has to go through and actually to become paper. And the fact that it's a lot stronger than Western paper, even though ours maybe is more commonly known. Washi is made from the bark of trees, so that's a lot stronger. It's more enduring. Some of the first book is still here today and it's made from washi paper. Uh, and still in pretty good conditions, I think. Uh, and I'm kind of amazed that they even thought of taking, uh, what was it called? Some some plant using its roots and become this sort of glue that would take the bark. It was a really amazing process. I don't know how anyone ever discovers it, but some guy 400 years ago got it. But even even cooler than that was looking, yeah, seeing the different people making that thing, seeing the old woman bent over, bent over the pool of water, uh, softening the bark, and the old and the man who was teaching us, who was more traditional. He was very. Uh, Actually, macho, which isn't the current uh, Japanese male image, but more traditional. And so he made, he was making jokes while he was doing it. So that's actually the first time I actually learned Japanese jokes. So now that's in my repertoire of just old man jokes at least. <laughs> Yeah.